Hi, I'm Yin Arenas, Program Manager in the Office Extensibility team. In this video, I will give an overview of the Microsoft Graph and the features that we are announcing as preview available for you to experiment in the beta endpoint of the Microsoft Graph. In the next eight minutes, you will learn 1. What is the Microsoft Graph and what benefits it brings to you as you develop applications that integrate with Office 365 and other services from the Microsoft Cloud? 2. What functionality is available as part of the Microsoft Graph API beta endpoint? 3. You will see a demo and get pointers to where you can go and learn more about the Microsoft Graph, get code samples, and start taking advantage of it in your own applications. At the end, I will leave you with a quick showcase of one of our partners who's already taking advantage of the API. The Microsoft Graph offers developers a unified API endpoint for accessing data, and intelligence and insights coming from the Microsoft Cloud. In other words, it exposes intelligent insights that Microsoft builds in the cloud by bringing together smart machine learning algorithms and a wealth of data and user behavior, all under a single API endpoint. The Microsoft Graph API was introduced earlier this year in preview under the name Office 365 Unified API. Today, the Office 365 Unified API is getting a new name. Microsoft Graph. Here is what's in preview underneath the Microsoft Graph slash beta endpoint. First, Office Graph APIs for querying relationships within Office 365. Then OneNote APIs for notes, Planner API for tasks, People API for aggregated content on the people that matter to you, the Excel REST APIs to access worksheets, tables, and more, and webhook support for getting notifications on changes from mail, events, conversations, and other entities. And last but not least, access to information for consumer users, including mail, calendar, contacts from Outlook.com, and files on other items from OneDrive. Imagine the possibilities available to you when you can access all of this data underneath a single endpoint. Now, I think you've all heard about the Office Graph. The Microsoft Graph evolves from the concept of the Office Graph and covers a broader surface area beyond Office 365 to include other Microsoft Cloud services, such as Azure AD. The insights available in Microsoft Graph are working with and trending around. There is a session specifically on Office Graph. Make sure to check that out. The Microsoft Graph makes all of this information available for applications and accessible through a single API endpoint, hosted under graph.microsoft.com all based on open standards, Auth 2.0, REST, and JSON. The Microsoft Graph is now leaving the previous stage and making two versions available. A generally available endpoint version v1.0, which is ready for you to start using in your production applications, and a refresh of the preview endpoint slash beta in which you can experiment the latest features that we're introducing into the Microsoft Graph that are not yet ready for production level use. This video focuses on the functionality that is under that refreshed beta endpoint. In the previous video, I covered the functionality under v1.0. Note that we will continue to update beta on a regular basis, even with potential breaking changes, but version endpoints will not have any break breaking changes once they're released. Now let's dig into what's available in the beta endpoint. First, all of the information that is available in v1.0, it's also available in beta. The beta endpoint has additional functionality for you to experiment and provide feedback on the latest features that we plan to add to the version endpoint. Let's look at the Microsoft Graph beta features in action. I'm going to do this through the API Explorer. I'm logged in with Sarah D, my demo user. In the other video, I show how to get access to the user's profile, messages, events, and files. In this demo, I will focus on additional functionality that is available in the beta endpoint, but not in the v1.0 endpoint. Let's start with notes from OneNote service. Underneath the me endpoint, I can navigate to slash me slash notes slash notebooks and expand on the different sections on Sarah's personal notebook. From there, I can choose a section from the sections array and look at the pages in it easily. From the page, I can get to a, the HTML content and use post or patch to create an update on the notes and sections. The Microsoft Graph also exposes tasks from the planner service. By navigating to the slash me slash tasks, I get back the set of tasks that are assigned to Sarah. I can also go to the task underneath a group and see all the tasks associated with a specific group. 
For more information about the Tasks API, make sure to catch the session that dives into this API. Now let's go to Working With, which is exposed as a navigation off of the user. Here, I get a list of users that are related to Sarah. This list is a shadow representation of each of the users, meaning that I don't get their full information set, but based on the result, I can then follow those references to do the navigation to the full profile of the user coming from the directory. More information about this functionality on the Office Graph video. Next, I'm going to demo some new exciting functionality. The Microsoft Graph supports both consumer and commercial accounts. That's right, using the Microsoft Graph, you can get to both the information that is in your work and school account, as we saw in the previous demos, and also the information in your personal account, like accounts in life.com, hotmail.com, and outlook.com. In this window, I'm logged in with an outlook.com account. I can navigate to the messages of this account by navigating to the v1.0endpoint slash me slash messages. What I get back is all the messages in this user's inbox. As you can see, using the API, I can access both consumer and commercial accounts. Now let's go to the final demo. I'm gonna transition to another web application in which I can create subscription for mail entities. You can see that the subscription was created in the service. If we inspect real quick, we are making a request for, to graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash subscriptions. Now to see one of the notifications fire, I'm gonna send an email to this account. The email has been sent, and once the email is sent, I also receive the notification on the callback endpoint that I used to subscribe for these changes. We saw the ability to subscribe to messages, and we have the ability to subscribe to other entities as well. Using the Microsoft Graph, you can get access to users in the consumer cloud as well as the commercial cloud. Microsoft Graph supports all 2.0 flows for authorization and authentication exposing the same level of permission scopes that the individual service APIs expose, allowing applications to call the API on behalf of a user using a delegated flow or on behalf of an application using the application flow. You can use query options like $Select and $Filter to manipulate the data set that is returned. The API supports service actions and functions and is OData compliant for clients that understand OData before. Full CRUD operations are part of the functionality, as it is course for single page application support. The ability to subscribe to changes on messages, events, and other entities is now also part of the preview of the Microsoft Graph. This will allow you to create a webhook and get a push callback every time a change happens on one of the subscribe entities. Taking advantage of the Microsoft Graph in your application is easy. For the preview, I highly recommend to try the new app registration experience hosted under apps.dev.microsoft.com. Look for the session on converged authentication to learn more about this. This converged experience allows you to register once for an app that works against consumer and commercial accounts and no longer requires for you to get a separate subscription to access it. Then it's happy coding in the platform of your choice. We don't have SDKs published for the beta endpoint, but we have all the tooling that we use for SDK generation available in GitHub. So you can use the same tooling and generate client libraries in the platform of your choice. Make sure to check the session on SDKs to get more information about this. We also have sample code in GitHub for multiple platforms that can be easily extended to include functionality in the beta endpoint. I'm sure that by now you're really excited about all of the opportunities and the simplicity of integrating with Microsoft Graph to access the vast amount of data from the Microsoft Cloud. So go to your favorite browser and navigate to graph.microsoft.com. You will be taken to the API documentation, links, getting started experience, API Explorer, code samples, libraries, and more. If you have any questions, ask us in Stack Overflow, tagging your questions with Microsoft Graph and Office 365. And let us know about the cool apps you're building by posting in Twitter with hashtag Microsoft Graph. Now, I wanna take a little bit of a minute and showcase one of our partners who recently built their application taking advantage of the Microsoft Graph. Thank you for watching this session and happy coding. Technology One creates powerful, deeply integrated enterprise software with one guiding purpose, to make life simpler for our customers. 
Microsoft Graph API opens up new ways to deliver on this, starting with Technology One Enterprise Content Management. Technology One ECM already gives businesses one place to store and one place to search for all their enterprise information from any device, anywhere, at any time. Microsoft Graph API means these benefits can be extended like never before. As access to Office 365 data becomes a reality, we're exploring how to enable ECM to capture emails directly from Outlook. By selecting the ECM Outlook add-in, emails and attachments can be instantly stored in ECM on send. To do this, ECM subscribes to the Graph API notification service and is notified when a new email is sent, along with the corresponding message ID. ECM then uses the Graph API and message ID to obtain a custom property set on the original email. The custom property is used to mark the correct email as being checked into ECM. It will also mean users can quickly view what's been saved using Outlook categories. Emails captured in ECM are automatically assigned an Outlook category. A request is sent to the Graph API specifying the message ID and Outlook category name. The captured email is easily viewed in ECM simply by clicking a button. With this industry first, Technology One is seamlessly extending the power of ECM to Office 365 and further enabling our customers move to the cloud. And the most exciting part is, this is only the beginning. Technology One is already working to integrate more of our solutions into the Microsoft 365 suite to make life even simpler for our customers. Technology One, transforming business, making life simple.